Welcome. Today I'm very happy to have an old friend here with me, if I may call you this way, Hannah. And it's beautiful to connect in that dancing dialogue. We've had wonderful conversations many years ago almost, and now it's beautiful to reconnect. And I really appreciate where you're at. I appreciate your integrity and your spirit your energy, how you are going into everything and how you are approaching life, but also very much based in the soul and the soul's purpose. So, Hannah, this is you. And we have chosen a really interesting topic for today. Would you like to tell us what you and me have chosen today together? Thank you for the introduction and for having me. Um, and just also you mentioned something that just sort of hit some um, it triggered some thoughts actually because I feel like we keep reconnecting in in in, in times when I am going through through transitions I feel like <laughs> that's always happening so it's really interesting it's really interesting um, yes and from our conversations uh, as we were talking about our own work and what we're doing and what's going on in our life um we came up with the topic or rather we we realized there's a theme <laughs> at play here yes. uh co-creation and for me co-creation is really the leading what's leading me through um this new year let's say right if we want to put again a little bit more <laughs> um Dr dramatic effect on on starting the new calendar yeah but it is um for me co-creation it has it, it just spontaneously came to me as a word and it's like this is where i'm leading with how i'm leading myself um so yeah let's riff on that let's dance with that <laughs> yes, dance. so co-creation is obviously a term that is often associated with this new consciousness that we're entering into and, and co-creation, as you said so beautifully, it comes actually from within. If I'm not in a space where I truly want to co-create, without self-interest, without whatever, just co-create because I can, with wonderful people, like yourself, who are flowing in that same kind of energy. And... What is interesting to me, of course, creativeness is also part of this. It's the power to create. Co-creation is that empowering each other to create. Mm -hmm. And so I'm very keen to hear what does it mean for you? What's that fire that burns that wants to be creating? Uh, yeah, that's really interesting. Um... So, like, I'm, I'm, I just want to go back and give some context for the audience and even just for ourselves, right? So, as as a business strategist, as a coach, as a mentor, um, especially working in the online space, I found myself pretty much sort of um, creating a lot, <laughs> giving a lot. Yes, working with people, um, and and that's all great and amazing, right? So, what is there? to to, compl to complain about i mean there's there's that, that that's great <laughs> it's what many people um aspire to have or desire to have what i found was that it was on one part and some activities very one-sided and one way creating and giving production and on the other hand there were these beautiful moments where we were co-creating together and these normally happens behind closed doors like really in-depth conversations that would really serve people at large right the larger community and and for me so I started looking at these there's a, there's a there's an imbalance of I came here to serve but we're only having these conversations with a few and how am I creating an impact? How is this creating an impact? If we're keeping these conversations within the converted, within the few, you know, within the small groups. And so um, this is one level of where the co-creation is coming to play. 
and why we're having these conversations on platforms like yours, <laughs> which is going out um, to as many people as possible, right? Yeah, it, it's really lovely how you brought that in context. You know, so many of us, we're so busy doing content creation. And this is a buzzword and everybody does it, whether it's YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever, Instagram, TikTok, I think there's even more than that. But as you said, yet we are creating, but the impact is often not necessarily, not what we're expecting, but it, what it could be. And so for me, what you're saying, the real conversations about co-creating something new are actually happening in a way, maybe behind doors. And I feel being in a new year, having this new excitement, what a wonderful opportunity to take these creations, these co-creations that maybe come from the soul, that are aligned to our song in the heart, that are aligned to all this new energy coming in for us, that we start to take it out. How does that feel for you? Yeah, um, you just reminded me of this this um this journey that a lot of people take right when they're when they've taken that beautiful empowering decision actually to say hey look i realize that i am here to serve people i realize that i'm here that i have skills the knowledge the expertise the experiences whatever to serve and to help and to empower and to activate and to teach tools and to give this you know and and do that through a business model, which is absolutely amazing and fine and beautiful and encouraged, <laughs> actually. But as you said, like we get stuck and we lose the purpose of why we came into the space to begin with. And so what I have seen and what I've experienced myself um, is this, we fall into habits, traps, call them what you want to call them. Um, of creating from a space of what can I gain from this versus how can I serve better? How can I create more impact? How can I get this message across so that people are really going to benefit from this, right? And so the energy is completely different. When we are creating with how much engagement can I get from for the sake of content creation that you just brought up? So you're actually putting the responsibility or you're, you're seeking the validation or you're seeking something of what can I get from the audience? I want your likes. I want your my, my dopamine fix or whatever from you. You're going to give it to me. You know, and, and it becomes this warped um, energy of, of what can I get versus what can I give? Um, and so when we talk about servant leadership, when we talk about purpose-led leadership, when we talk about purpose-led businesses, well, something happens on the way <laughs> to many, many, many people on this journey, in this process. And these are the conversations we're having. Like, how do we come back to that? How can we come back into alignment? How can we come back into listening to ourselves? How can we come back to co-creating within ourselves and with source and with energy and with all of the beautiful things that you're bringing into that space as well yeah so beautiful you know when you say traps and, and labels and expectations it is really like sometimes you're not doing it again from that true purpose from your true heart you're doing it as you said because of again and a self-interest even if that self-interest is not monetary but still, I feel now we have this opportunity to start serving and sharing again. And let me just say it in a one single word, because we care. We are not really here to save anyone. You can't really help anyone unless they're ready to help themselves. And that doesn't mean that whole niche of self-help, because I'm not into that at all. But it is like we are here to to serve in a way that others are empowered to see their own magic. Mm. Mm. And it's so important to come back into that. That is real co-creation. 
Ah, you're, you're bringing up so much in me right now because there's a lot that I've been discussing again behind closed doors, probably because it's still the full message is still coming to me. Maybe there are some things I need to learn, but I'm going to bring it up here and see when, see where this goes. Um, is the reality of codependency in this field. Um, and so <laughs> what I'm uncovering, be it through people I've worked with and be it through my own experiences, is, is this, is, is the codependent like um, behaviors and patterns that starts being seen in such industries such as coaching, mentoring, etc um where it's nobody's fault it's just the way the energetics of the person or the, or the makeup or the patterns or the behaviors or the past trauma whatever right whatever for whatever reasons um there is this at play and that is not really if you don't if you're experiencing it and not seeing it or not realizing it or not becoming conscious about it it can be a very dang dangerous game people to play and this is why the coaching industry is getting a bad name for these things but the reality then the way i'm looking at it is well these are big bloody lessons you need to learn we need to learn as human beings along the journey of life <laughs> so be it maybe you're maybe you're seeing it come up in in um, in the professional world or with your coach and mentor sort of relationship or maybe you're seeing it in your marriage or maybe you're seeing it with your friendships or maybe you're seeing it with your employer even right like we always constantly have this codependent sort of need and fix to feel validated to be feel seen to feel supported etc and we're not it's not coming again from within yeah and this is again so important what you said you know healing coaching training you know it doesn't matter anything that is supporting people is not about making little Hannahs and little Patricks. It's not about that. It's also not about that people keep on being needy instead of being ready. But we're living in societies. Again, this is beautiful because we are here to step out of it. That's the evolution. That's the ascension, whatever you want to call it. That's the shift. We're stepping out of all these old things that have been holding us. And for me, one of the greatest uh, metaphors and symbols, and I've taken it, of course, much, much beyond, because that's what I do, as you know, it's the, the drama triangle. Yeah. And if you look, at it, it's incredible. Most of us function on the drama triangle, and we're not really conscious. And you step from the victim into the rescuer who fix everything, the hero, and then you judge, and then you're the villain, and you just go round and round. And I feel as we're going into this new co-creation, that new energy that we are talking about here, it is about, and, and somebody phrased it before me, otherwise I would have done it, is the presence circle. So when you step out of the drama, the roles and all the nonsense that is related to that, then you actually go into presence. So you collaborate, you co-create, but you also develop, and this is my part of it, so I'm not copying somebody here. This is stepping in what, this comes from um, spiral dynamics. They say when you go really spiraling out in the higher consciousness, you become a collective self. What does the collective self do? It doesn't support, it does support, but it doesn't fix, it doesn't do things for other people. The collective self makes simply the space. And this is also a very important theme for 2023, that you nurture your own light to that extent that you don't need to do things for others, that you don't need to take the suffering and the misalignment and all the problems that you have in the world of business and corporate and whatever, government, I mean, wherever. So I feel this co-creation, the energy that you are bringing here today is really, hey, we can do that. Not behind the doors anymore. Not behind the doors and in healthy 
empowering relationships that is not about me feeling good or you feeling good but it's about us growing it's about us learning it's about us being I, I'm, I'm I'm losing I don't have the words for it right now but it's the flourishing sort of feeling I'm getting no um and I think this is the more we explore uh the new paradigms if you want to call them or doing business the new paradigms of serving the new the new ways uh, that we are redefining recreating you know how to do this um yeah this is this is just where we're going this is where it's at of course it takes it takes a lot of us it's easier to hold on to the old paradigms and programming it is because very you easy. do it very easy <laughs> And it is interesting that, you know, I still feel it sometimes because it's comfort. It's, it's what you know. But yet once you dare and you have the courage to break it and to deconstruct it, the treasures that are unfolding are limitless. And yes, as you said, it starts actually with our relationships. First is the relationship itself. The second with our partner, beloved, family, whoever is next. We are here to evolve. <laughs> it's an inside out. So it's always going to be an inside out approach. No, and I, look, when I was teaching marketing, I would always say it's an inside out approach. Like if you especially if you're promoting your, your services, your skills, your strengths, if you're promoting yourself, building a personal brand, it's always going to be an inside out approach. The problem is that people are looking at what do I need to say so that people can buy from me? Like that is that is such a like, if I may say, as backward sort of attempt at personal branding and getting sales and attracting clients because what you're gonna get is a bunch of people who fell for your marketing. Yes, and and this is also interesting. I want to bring that in here. A friend of mine, very dear friend, she said in marketing it's like you have this big fish on it. And you need to use all the hashtags and all the right words so that the people can come to you. Saying what you're saying. But you know, if people come to me who don't who are not really ready to work with me, and I don't really want to work with them, it's meaningless. And I do see more and more this energy of co-creation coming in here, being very transparent, being honest, being in integrity. This is my gift. This is what I have. How do you want to play? I'm happy to serve, but I'm not, I'm not a servant that is just cleaning all your dirt. When I'm serving, I'm serving from my heart with the gifts that I have. But if you can't take it, then really... No, and what are you bringing to the table? And what you're bringing to the table, because I'm not going to do it on my own. I can't do it for you. <laughs> and this is the other thing. I can't do it for you. And for me, this is also co-creation. That spirit, even in a client, whatever relationship that we have, what are you bringing? It's not only your money. Because your money can't pay it. Your money is part of the exchange. But really, much more important, you're coming to the play. And that is yeah in fact i always tell people like money money is just you exchanging money for a service like you would go and exchange money for a product um but the real but the real investment is you how are you investing yourself your time your energy your willpower your self-discipline like how is that all coming into the game and not only that but also your knowledge and your expertise because if you're not going to bring in your knowledge and your expertise, then there's not going to be a co-creation. It's me going to, it's me telling you what to do. And you don't want that. I, that is not serving you at all. And I've had people come into my space where like, hey, just give me a bloody checklist. And like, I'm sorry. I, I have, I have all the checklists in the world. I can create them like this for you. I am not going to give it to you. This is not going to serve you. It's just going to occupy some space in your drive. Let's create your checklist. Exactly. Create your step-by-step. -step. 
how <laughs> profound uh, you and I are just unlocking a whole new a whole new energy a whole new space for co-creation in relationships with clients no matter what it is you know what are you bringing I, I you and I we love to unlock what people already have maybe the mm. hidden parts of course in different ways but bring what you have and and you need to choose what serves you and what doesn't serve you I can't do that I serve you as in being that mirror as in being that key that unlocks that is co-creation if I'm a key then what are you <laughs> you yeah. understand I feel in a way the old terms of role plays will take a totally new stage. Mm -hmm. A session, a coaching, or whatever, a training can be like a role play. What is your role? What is mine? How do we play together here so mm -hmm. that all of us are co creators? Yeah. Yeah. I think we opened a beautiful box here. <laughs> yeah. It can go in so many directions. and. And I, I, again, this comes back to self-leadership um, and this comes back to the whole co-creation part of self. So how, from what energy and from like, how am I showing up, whether that be in the, in the professional coach, client, whatever dynamic, or whether that be in your marketing, in your communities, in your audience, with your family, with your friends, it's what you're bringing to the table. Right. And, and with that, and this is the link between, I always find the link between um, intimate relationships and business relationships. And it's, it's, it's all the same. They're just different portals. They're different mechanisms. They're different um, uh, tools, let's say, of bringing it to light. Right? What's that? Different dynamics. Different dynamics, different vehicles of, of bringing this forward. Um, and, and what I've seen and, and what I've been experiencing and unfolding um through myself because i'm human and <laughs> living the human experience yes. uh, and and as, I, as we're reflecting and mirroring back at each other you know clients coming in this space is is this um is this co-creation with self and how am i leading myself what is my responsibility where am i falling short not in terms of not being good enough or not being qualified enough or not um, being liked enough or validated enough by the outside, but where am I falling short on myself? Where am I not coming with my own empowered skills and knowledge to the space? Does that make sense? I, I went, I, I said a lot to say one thing. Yeah, this is amazing. What you said makes so much sense. What same like what we are asking from our clients or whatever. What are you bringing to the table? It's also about us. It starts here. If we are not that example and don't bring our magic to the table, nothing is going to happen. All these labels, you know, you need to have this quality and the other and these skills and soft skills and hard skills and whatever. Who are you? What are you bringing to the table? And it doesn't have to be singular. So in the emerging archetypes that you are not familiar with, yes, I could be a seed of love. That could be what I'm bringing to the table at this moment. I can bring at the table at this moment the consciousness architect. What we're talking about is about consciousness. How do I co-create? How do I expand this consciousness that we are actually co-creating yeah. it could also be the the dreamer the one that dreams the world into being if i don't bring my dream how can we co-create this new dream together in that human experience of the soul that is all connected through the heart it's, it's actually very simple it's perfect i can see how these archetypes play out in the in 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 these type of professional relation in the in the coaching mentor mentee whatever relationship um yeah yeah i feel we're gonna stop this for the audience today we're very yeah. grateful that we had the space to do that and of course it's not about the likes and the subscriptions and all of that it is about we serving we came with who we are 
to bring to the table today. Beautiful Hannah mm -hmm. to share with us and to bring this beautiful energy of co-creation and me being able to dance with you. Thank you for the dance. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you for the dance. So and we'll see you again. Yeah. Take care.